Is the iPad finally a MacBook replacement? That question has been on our minds for so many years, begging Apple to give us some decent software because the M4 iPad Pro was amazing, but the software was just dragging it down. Well, we now have had iPadOS 26 for well over a month now, and I've been using it, testing it, and I've found some issues that are making me doubt Apple's success with iPadOS 26, because at the very beginning, it seemed like the best update ever. They fixed everything. They fixed the multitasking. They added a menu bar. Everything is well and dandy, but that's a little bit far from the truth, as I found after one month. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the problems that I've found with iPadOS 26, with the iPad, or specifically the iPad Pro, because that's very important to the question of, is it actually a successful laptop replacement? Now, before I talk about those issues, I do wanna talk about some of the benefits or the positives. First of all, there are a lot of benefits like the multitasking getting improved greatly, now finally being able to open many apps at once and be able to move them around freely, resize them. Yes, thank you, Apple. Finally, you are listening. Even going as far as to add the menu bar at the top, adding folders in the dock, great updates all around. And I applaud you, Apple, for the progress. Finally, a decent step towards making this a true MacBook replacement. But like I've mentioned earlier, there are some issues that I gotta talk about. But before I get into those software-related problems that have really started to annoy me, I wanna first get into the first problem, which has to do with, of course, the pricing, especially in light of some new revelations and leaks for Apple. First off, the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard is extremely expensive, especially if you're getting the 13 inch model, which you do wanna get if you wanna use it like a MacBook replacement, because right now the smallest MacBook has a 13 inch display. So you kinda wanna match that since using the 11 inch is definitely a little bit cramping if you're trying to do some multitasking and everything else. But the problem is with the 13 inch, you're paying a ton of money, basically close to $1,500. And if you're paying that much, you expect to get a great laptop experience. The problem is Apple's MacBook Air with the M4 chip, double the RAM, now 16 gigs, and it's available on Amazon for 850 bucks. That's like getting close to half the price of this setup right here. And that MacBook Air is amazing. It's so much less expensive but at the same time, so much more capable. And that same problem that I'm talking about is about to get even worse when the new $600 MacBook comes out with a 13 inch display just like this, but with an iPhone chip that is not as powerful as this, but still very, very powerful and capable. And when that comes out, likely early next year, this iPad Pro laptop experience is gonna get a whole lot harder for Apple to sell because Apple at that point needs to perfect the multitasking and the feature set of all of this iPad OS, but it is still lacking, so let's jump into that. To be honest, after about a month of using iPad OS 26, it still hasn't really felt like I would be able to replace my MacBook because there are certain things that feel special and so productive on MacBooks that I just can't replicate on this iPad, so let's dig into that. But first, our sponsor, Nada, came out with a genius memo AI voice recorder that changes the game for voice capture for those who need to keep up in meetings or even phone calls. This AI memo voice recorder snaps onto your phone with MagSafe and this really nice leather case. Then to record, simply press the button. Once done, your voice capture is transcribed into text and it even summarizes key points in your conversation, allowing you to easily get to the main points from a really long meeting, which is great. Another nice feature is that it doesn't always have to be connected to your phone. It simply records on device with smart noise reduction for clean quality. Then with one tap, the audio recording goes to the cloud and is available on any device of your choice in seconds, which is really convenient. 
It's super lightweight and ultra portable with insane battery life so you won't miss a thing. So go ahead and check it out by using the links down in the description and pinned comment below. Now getting back to iPadOS 26, it feels like it has actually started to take a little bit more time to basically start multitasking because before you would simply have an app open, you'd bring up your dock and drag and drop an app right onto the right side and it would split it into two, instantly having a multitasking experience. But now with iPadOS 26, it doesn't work that way. You actually have to go back to the other app and adjust the size to have them side by side, therefore having an extra step required compared to before, which does take a little bit more time and it's a little bit annoying if you're constantly opening up new apps and starting new multitasking sessions. Now, yes, I've gotta say it is amazing to have an option to have so many different apps open at once, that's definitely an upgrade, but I feel like it'd be nice to have that old slide over split feature back and kind of combine the two to make it quicker. Another big issue that we just can't get rid of on the iPad is of course the port selection compared to a MacBook since we have this one Thunderbolt port. So you're missing the freedom that you have on a MacBook to plug multiple things at once. Like let's say you wanna plug something in while plugging in an SD card with some sort of adapter. Or let's say you wanna quickly charge up some sort of USB accessory like my smart ring charger into a port, have it quickly charge. You can't really do that on an iPad. Yes, with the Magic Keyboard, you can do pass-through charging through the hinge, but I really wish Apple would add a second Thunderbolt port on the iPad Pro. That would be amazing. But back to software issues, another thing that Apple still has not fixed with iPadOS 26 is that you can only have one source of audio playing at the same time because when I use my Mac, I'm almost always listening to music quietly in the background while doing other things like let's say editing YouTube videos that we do all the time or if I'm just browsing the web and I want to quickly turn on a video or something like that, I can listen to both at the same time briefly. But on the iPad, it does not work that way. If you're listening to music, whether with the Apple Music app or with YouTube in the background or anything else, as soon as you're scrolling somewhere on the web or let's say on X and you press play to hear what someone's saying on a video, your music pauses immediately. So want to do some video editing while listening to music? No, it is impossible to do on the iPad. Now going further, even though Apple added the menu bar on the iPad, which is a cool touch, it seems like it's not really as useful as it is on the Mac. When you open up a bunch of these different settings, a lot of times the menu bar, a lot of them are grayed out. So it has a bunch of options, but you can't do a lot of them compared to where on the Mac you have so many options, almost all of them are available all the time. So useful, especially with like extra added options like being able to switch a counts really quickly. You can do that on the Mac, but not really on the iPad. Now onto the next point, display support. So much better on the Mac. First of all, multiple displays, like having two displays on with the main screen on the MacBook Air. You can't do that on the iPad. Of course, only one external display, but the biggest issue is that external monitors are limited to 60 hertz no matter what. So if you wanna play a game on a bigger external display, you can't even get the same 120 hertz that the iPad Pro display itself supports, which is so disappointing. But the biggest issue by far is file support. On the Mac, you could pretty much open any app out there. You can go to Safari, whatever, to the browser, download third-party apps, DMG files, a bunch of other files. None of those are supported on iPadOS, which is such a disappointment. You could also do things on Mac like running Windows software using Parallels or running Windows games using Crossover. You can't do that, of course, on the iPad. And just being able to tinker around by opening up Terminal and just looking through basically everything on your device, searching up the hardware metrics, like the CPU speed, the temps, all of that, doing proper thermal throttle testing, you can't do anything like that 
on the iPad. So having those real computer tinkering opportunities on the Mac is so cool to do and you can't do it on an iPad. Now I know that is too much to ask for. I know Apple would never do that because they wanna protect their app store sales above all else, but I wish they would just give us better app support and side loading in the future. And Apple, just please let us play two sound sources at once. I'm begging you, the M4 chip is more than capable to do all of those things, but Apple just doesn't want to do it. I mean, 60 hertz displays, Apple, why? You can fix it instantly by snapping your fingers. So with that said, let's hope for the best for iPadOS 26. Let me know your wish list for that down in the comment section below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe above for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.